Hi. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, so if you haven't already started watching our Facebook lives and been following us, be sure to like and share so you can always be notified as well as ringing the bell. Before we get a jump into it, I just want to reintroduce myself for anyone that is new watching or anyone who has been watching. I'm Bianca Kruger. I'm your local IRA specialist. And we have my colleague over here. Hi, I'm Diana Hoff. I'm not the blonde. Um, I am the business and marketing coordinator for Mountain West IRA. I do a lot of the training. Um, if you call in uh, with questions on a new account, you might get Bianca, you might get Megan, or you might get me. Um, we are probably the first people that you'll talk to when you call in. Um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with uh, the second part of our FAQ today, right? Yes, so we are doing our FAQ, but before we jump into anything, we just want to give our disclaimer. Absolutely. So we always have to do this. Mountain West IRA does not offer tax, financial, or legal advice to clients. We do not promote, endorse, or offer any investments. Um, if you believe that you do need advice, you should consult with the appropriate professionals licensed in that area. Talk to your tax man, talk to your financial planner. Um, but if you have a great idea and you want to know if it's something that you're allowed to do inside of your IRA, by all means, give us a call. We can get you started or point you in the right direction but we will not tell you what to invest in. You have the total power when it comes to a self-directed IRA, which I think is actually pretty cool. Exactly, so we can always give you all the information, just like here, all the free education, answer all of your questions, but we cannot give any advice. We can't tell you our opinion. We can't tell you which investment to choose, but we're more than happy to discuss that, as well as if you ever want a conference and with one of those licensed professionals, we're more than happy to do that as well. But Absolutely. without Absolutely. further ado, this is part two of our Frequently Asked Questions series. If you have not watched part one, SDI or basics, go ahead and watch that. Um, if not, let's jump into it. So part two is investing and with real estate inside of your IRA. Yeah, this is so common. Oh my gosh. So many of our clients have figured out that they can actually get incredible with returns with real estate. Um, but we get a lot of the same questions over and over again. So we figured it would be a good idea for us to go through some of those. Yes, so we're just going to role play a little bit. If you haven't seen the first one, you'll see I'm going to act as if I'm the client asking the question and Diana is going to be our Mountain West representative to be able to answer these questions just how any one of us would answer it here if you were calling in. And remember, while we're doing this, if you have a question that you would like us to answer, go ahead, hop on and type that question in the comments and we'll go ahead and answer it while we're live. Yes. Okay. So first question, are there restrictions on the type of property I can purchase and am I restricted to residential real estate? So this is a two parter. Oh boy. So no, um, you can purchase, uh, any type of real estate you can, you're not limited to residential. You can do commercial, you can hold, um, residential, commercial buildings, vacant land, condos, mobile homes, apartment buildings, multifamily, tiny homes. Um, if, you, if you can go out as a person and purchase it, you can purchase it in your IRA. You just have to be careful to do it right. Well, excellent. Okay, so that answers all types of questions. And I also wanted to let people know that it doesn't have to be a property either. You also have one, um, and when I say property, I mean like physical property. You can also invest in bare land as well. That is considered real estate. Mm -hmm. um, so question number two, can I buy a house in my IRA and live in it or use it as a vacation home? No, you can't. That is absolutely a prohibited transaction. Um, you cannot personally work on it. Uh, you can't live in it. Um, you can't like buy a second home and and 
rent it out as a vacation property, but then stay in it every once in a while, you have to have that arm's length distance. You purchase the property strictly as an investment. Um, I don't know, think of it like insider trading maybe, but um, you cannot live in it, you cannot work in it. Um, you can rent it out. And if at some point down the line, you think that that vacation home that you've been renting out and that's all fixed up nice and is making your IRA all kinds of money, if at some point you think you wanna live there, you do have the ability um, once you get ready to retire or at any point, if you're ready to pay the taxes on it, you can distribute it to yourself. You can't buy it from your IRA, but you can distribute it to yourself and pay the taxes on that fair market value. At that point, it becomes yours. It's no longer owned by your IRA, but it's yours. And you have the ability to do with it whatever you will, but not until it's distributed to you um, and you you then have to, of course, pay the taxes on it. So right. that takes a little financial planning, but boy, there's some really cool stuff you can do, but you right. cannot live in it. That is correct. And I also want to let people know that, um, yes, you can certainly distribute the entire asset. We also have clients who don't want to hit such a heavy tax burden. Um, so you definitely want to key financial planning. Um, you can also disperse portions of this property throughout the years into your own name as well. So then that tax burden is split. That is something, another option. So we're always going to give you all the options, all the tips and tricks, so then you can make the best education educated decision on your own. Well, not on your own, but you have to make that decision. You can certainly contact an advisor or a financial planner, whomever you need. We can't give you the advice, but one of those professionals can. Absolutely. And remember, until it is 100% out of your IRA, you still can't live in it. If, Correct. Even if you take four years to distribute it to yourself, maybe 25% a year, so you don't have that one big tax hit um until that is 100 percent outside of your ira you cannot live in it okay so now question number three a little similar a little different can my live my kid <laughs> can my kids or children live in my ira on property and pay me rent no anyone who is a prohibited person is just like you they cannot rent it they cannot live in it they cannot use it um so if just the way that you can't be in it your kids and linear family members can also not be in it and if you want to know exactly how that works if you go see irs code i'm going to remember this 4975 <laughs> irs co code 4975 you can read exactly what they're talking about when it comes to prohibited transactions. And if you're ever unsure, we do also have written documents in every single one of our IRA starter kits on the second to last signature page. We have all types of disqualified persons and why and whom and what those rules are. You are required to sign that any single time that you decide to open an account so you are aware. And you can always keep a copy of it and re refresh yourself or go back and look at it at your convenience. And remember, when you call us, you always get a person. You can always ask one of us if you want to know specifically based on your situation. If you're okay, we'll tell you, oh, no, that's perfectly fine. We'll tell you, oh, gosh, no, you can't do that. Or if you hit that gray area, we will refer you to a specialist. <laughs> yes. And so we kind of halfway answered question number four is, who are disqualified persons? So I know we oh. touched on it, but we didn't cover all disqualified persons. Right, so let's talk about who is a disqualified person. So you are a disqualified person, your spouse is a disqualified person. That kind of that kind of is what most people get. Then we're talking about lineal ascendants and descendants. And basically, in a nutshell, that's everybody who goes straight up and down on that family tree. So parents and grandparents, also children and grandchildren and anyone married to them. Um, it also includes um, any person providing plan related services, which would be custodians, advisors, uh, fiduciaries, administrators, 
Um, if you had an IRA and you had a rental property in it, um, uh, you wouldn't want Mountain West to go stay there because we would be a custodian. Um, also, any entity, uh, business, corporation, partnership, which you own at least 50%, um, and that's directly or indirectly. So uh, you cannot um, like put your business inside of some commercial property if you are more than a 50% owner or if you're going to physically work there. So also there's some little things to keep an eye on. But also again, keep in mind that even if you might not be 50% shareholder, it is also contingent to you cannot be the largest shareholder as well. Mm -hmm. So yes, you may not own 50%, but if you own 35% and everyone else owns less, that is also not able to be put inside of your IRA. Basically, the IRS wants to see everything is working not in your personal benefit. It is for investment purposes only. Right. Correct. Okay. Now, question number five. If I don't have enough funds for my investment, can I partner my funds with someone else? Um, yes, you can. At the inception of a deal, you have the ability to go ahead and um, partner with another IRA or another person. Now, at this point, it doesn't matter if they are a prohibited person. If a husband and wife want to take their IRAs and partner them together, or even multiple IRAs, um, I have a lot of clients who have both traditional and Roth, or solo Ks and Roth, and they partner those together. In addition, they also partner with their spouse. And you can do that. You can even partner with another person or a company. The trick is that when you do that partnership, you have to do it at the inception of the deal at the very beginning. And whatever the percentage of ownership is, say you own 25%, your IRA owns 50%, and your spouse's IRA owns 25%. Those percentages have to remain the same for the entire time that house is owned inside of your IRA. So um, everything going out, um, any expenses, uh, paying property taxes, maybe homeowners association dues, they come out at those percentages. So if you're 60-40 with your spouse's IRA, 60% is coming from your IRA, 40% is coming from their IRA. And in just the same way, income coming back in is going to remain at those percentages. 60% going to your IRA and 40% going to your spouse's IRA. Now, the good part is you don't have to have whoever's running from you write two checks. Um, they can write a single check, send it here, and we will make sure that it gets into the proper IRAs because we have a record of what those percentages look like. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. But yes, at the inception of a deal, you can partner. Also, keep in mind, I know you mentioned check. But we also now offer ACH options as well as for rental payments. So if your renter doesn't want to have to write a physical check, I know some people like it, but I feel like it's very almost prehistoric nowadays. I don't even remember the last time I've actually had my own checkbook. Everything is online nowadays. So we wanted to offer that online uh, ease, capability, and convenience to all of our clients, and not only our clients, but our clients, renters, and people who they do business with as well. So if you ever have a question on how to do ACH or automatic bank transfer, you can always go to our website in the upper left-hand corner. It'll say IRA payment. If you have any questions at all or need any assistance, feel free to call us and we're more than happy to help you. So um, now question number six, second to last question. Can my IRA purchase property that I already own? No. As a matter of fact, you know, that's such a popular question. We probably should have hit on that one first. I've actually had that exact question two times today already. Um, if you already own property in your name, you cannot use it as a contribution and stick it into your IRA. You cannot have your IRA use its funds to purchase it. That's a prohibited transaction. That's self-dealing. Basically, if if that person couldn't stay in the house, you cannot buy from them. Now, 
you can go sideways. There's cousins and aunts and uncles, but you have to be very careful about intent. Um, yeah, prohibited transactions that are indirect, an indirect prohibited transaction. One of the gentlemen I spoke with today, he was thinking ahead and he says, well, I own a property. Well, how about if my brother's okay, how about if I sell it to him and then he sells it to my IRA? Well, that's a paper trail that the IRS can follow, definitely. And that would be an indirect prohibited transaction. If you can't do it right out of the chute, you can't go sideways a little bit and then come back at it to do it. It's still a prohibited transaction because just because you took that extra step doesn't mean you're not self-dealing. So I know, unfortunately, you cannot take property or something that you already own and put it inside of your IRA. But you can use your IRA to purchase new property. Exactly. And I just want to touch on this again. There's so many opportunities and ways that you can invest in real estate. It is frowned upon and not in your best interest to do this sideways because we would not have a knowledge of that prior. Um, you always want to go back to the intent. If the IRS sees you intentionally trying to, you know, cut them out of the deal and not being able to do a transaction the right way, um, if they go back and look at it, you can get uh, penalized. So you just want to keep in mind that the IRS is watching. You want to make sure that everything that you're doing is an intentionally correct, intentionally not having a prohibited transaction. And if you communicate with us, we'll always be able to let you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember, question. IRAs are incredible ways to build your wealth to give yourself a comfortable retirement. But at the end of the day, even though the, I, the government has given you this wonderful tool to build your funds tax deferred or tax free, um, at the end of the day, they want their cut. So uh, if, you're, if you're doing everything above board, you are going to have a lot of clear sailing and you're going to really enjoy the process. But it's when you try and sneak in those little corner case deals that the IRS gets excited. And that's why we're here. We don't want the IRS to get excited. We want you to get excited by how well you're doing. Exactly. And so our final question for today, out of our frequently asked questions of real estate, are there any other ways to purchase an investment if I'm low on funds? So let's say I do not have all the funds to be able to purchase my dream investment property. Absolutely. Um, there's actually a really good way. If, if you don't want to partner with yourself, you don't want to partner with, with someone else, you just want to have it 100% inside of your own IRA, but you don't have enough um, cash on hand to do a cash deal, you do actually have the capability of getting a loan. Now, it's not a mortgage. It's not a loan you're getting. It's a loan that your IRA is taking out. And there's only one type of acceptable loan that you can get. Now, you can get this type of loan from uh, a couple of banks. There are a few out there that, that do this type of loan, or you can get a hard money loan from a private lender. But it must be, and this is key, a non-recourse loan. So let me explain that, because a lot of people haven't heard of what a non-recourse loan is. Um, when you go get a mortgage, you sign your life away. They want to know if you have good credit and, oh my gosh, they're going to run everything they can about you. They want to know how much you make. Um, but a non-recourse loan doesn't care about any of that. They're looking at the property. They want to know what the loan to value is. They want to know, does it have a renter? Does it have income coming in? Um, all that sort of stuff. They want to know if your IRA has enough money to cover paying back that loan if for some reason you don't have a tenant for maybe up to six months. Uh, depends on what bank you're talking to. But basically, they're going to look at um, how much equity are they going to have in this deal because they're going to secure this loan with the property. Now, here's why it's called a non-recourse loan. At the end of the day, if you don't pay, if you default, if your IRA just simply something horrible happens and you cannot cover that mortgage and you default on it, their only recourse is to take that property. They can't come back on you. They can't come back on your IRA. They are simply going to take the property. And that's why there's a few extra rules involved. Now, normally this kind of loan, when you're getting it, is going to be maybe a point above 
where everybody's normal mortgage is if you're talking a single family home. So if it's currently 3.5%, it might be 4.5, maybe 5%. So it's going to be very close. Of course, there's lots of hard money lending available out there. If you do that, um, it depends on who you go to. It's going to be higher um, than a regular institution, but those are out there as well. Um, and you can get different kinds of deals and different things going on, especially if you're doing a fix and flip and you expect it to only be a short term loan. So there's so much you can do if you have more questions on that, because boy, non recourse lending, we could do a whole series on that. There's a lot involved and it is an incredibly fast way to grow your IRA. It really, really is. And let us know in the comments if you don't know what a non-recourse loan is and if you want to know more information about it. Um, I'm sure it could benefit lots of clients, at least having the information at your fingertips so you can really make the best decision for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't see any additional questions. Did we have any more on the list? Not as of right now. We did all of our frequently asked questions on real estate inside of your IRA today. Fantastic. Um, if you think of anything, if you're watching the rebroadcast of this later, uh, feel free to put a comment in. Uh, let us know or just give us a call. I think we've got our number scrolling. Yep, we got our number scrolling. You can always give us a call. We're happy, happy to answer your questions. Um, I've taken a lot of phone calls today. Uh, people really are, are ready to get back into the investment uh, world. Yeah, getting that real estate thought. I helped somebody with notes today. Oh, and speaking of notes, um, next week we're going to have an FAQ on having your um, IRA be the bank. So you are the person doing the hard money loan. You are the person that is funding someone else and you are simply getting that return. Um, so if you have questions on that, send them to us, put them in the comments. We'll go ahead and get those answered next week. So don't forget to like and share. So then any of your friends or family's loved ones can be able to have all of the same free education that you just experienced, as well as we do also have our YouTube channel. So if you ever want to go on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see our more recorded versions of these types of information um, seminars. Um, and don't forget to tune in and ring the bell because then you'll get the automatic notifications letting you know when we're about to go live as well as when we are. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Happy Wednesday. Um, and we'll see you guys later. Absolutely. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow. We'll go ahead and put up a little uh, link for it here within a few minutes. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about precious metals inside of your IRA with Amy from our compliance department. So that's going to be some really good information. So if you're interested in gold, silver, platinum, palladium inside of your IRA, be sure and tune in tomorrow because we're going to have some great, great information. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.